here we are looking at the definition of the nth root. Now, in order for us to transition the definition of integer exponents to rational numbers as exponents, we need to understand the similarity between the nth root and the nth power. So to help us out, we have the following definition. We say that for a positive integer n, such that n is strictly greater than one, the principal nth root of a real number a, which is denoted using the nth root of a, is going to be equal to a real number b, such that the following holds true. So saying that the nth root of a is equal to a real number b means that if we raise both sides of this expression to the nth power, that we also should have a being equal to b to the nth power. Now, when this number n is odd, there are no restrictions on a and b. They could be any real number our little hearts desire. However, when n is an even number, both a and b must be non-negative. Now, before looking at some examples, let's consider some of the new terminology for this notation. So when we are thinking about the principal nth root of a, we want to note that this nth root is referred to as the radical. The number a, or the inside, is referred to as the radicand. And then the number in the pocket, in our radical pocket, is called the index, or the root index. Now, to better help us understand this definition, let's consider the following examples. So here we are asked to simplify three different radical expressions. Now in part A, notice that the index is positive three. So since three is an odd number, we know that there's no restrictions on the radicand. So having the third root of a negative is okay. So we're asking ourselves what real number can be multiplied together three times to give us negative 27. So thinking about the factors of negative 27, we know that negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 produces minus 27. So we can rewrite this as the third root of negative 3 cubed. And so the root index and the third power are going to cancel each other out, leaving us with negative 3. Now in part b, here, notice how we don't have an index. So when the root pocket is empty, or appears to be empty, what we actually have here is a 2. This is the square root of 144, all divided by 169. Now, in this case, we have an even index. So we need to be mindful that both real numbers a and b must be non-negative, or greater than or equal to 0, which in this case we, ha we do have. So we want to rewrite this. So we know that 144 can be rewritten as 12 squared, and that 169 can be rewritten as 13 squared. And using the properties of exponents, we can further rewrite this as the square root of 12 over 13 squared. And again, we can observe here that since 12 over 13 is non-negative, we can simplify our radical expression to 12 over 13. And last but not least, in part C, here we have the number 6 as the index. So again, we want to be careful of our definition here, being mindful that A and B must be non-negative. But when we look at the radicand, we realize that, wait a second, this is a negative number. So we can actually conclude here immediately that the sixth root of minus 64 is not real. And we know that this is not real since no matter how hard we try, we can't find a number that when raised to the sixth power is going to be equal to negative 64. Because when we multiply numbers together an even number of times, we always produce positive values. So now that we have reviewed the definition of the nth root radical, 
we're officially ready to start transitioning to the properties of radicals and their similarities to the properties of exponents.